Effect is pleased to have Sarah Canning with us today. You may know her from the popular series Vampire Diaries, but she is so much more than that, and she's been keeping very busy. Now, Sarah, Indeed. where have you found this passion for acting? It actually all began for me when I was 12, and I auditioned for a school play. And I didn't really know why I was doing it because I was a very shy kid and I had this really cool drama teacher who encouraged some of us to audition for the after school play. And I felt so free. I felt this strange bravery and freedom that I'd never felt before. And uh, it all kind of spun into a love of acting and a love of storytelling and just spending my time with people who loved it just as much as I did, and they were such an accepting group of kids, and uh, I just found a home with them. Now, you actually didn't initially pursue acting, though, in your career. You were actually going to school in Vancouver mm -hmm. uh, and decided to leave school to pursue acting. What was that defining moment for you that made you do that, <laughs> that shift? I think while I was studying in university, I was doing general arts studies, and I wasn't spending as much time on them as I should have been because I was working on several plays at the same time. And I remember a friend of mine coming to watch a one act that I was doing in university, and he said, why aren't you doing this with your life? And I finally asked myself the same question because it, it had always been my favorite thing to do but I never really let myself dream in that capacity that it might turn into a career it was just always what I did for fun what I loved doing it was my hobby and I think I finally sat down and I just stripped away everything else and that was going on in my brain about what an ideal career would be or what the smartest thing to do would be and I just said to myself why why aren't you pursuing what you really love and that's when uh, that's when I decided to go to film school and study acting well I think that's a common crutch we as young people face mm -hmm. especially um, we're pressured so early on especially coming out of high school to know what we want to do totally and yes. and pick our careers and kind of lay it out in front of us and a lot of the times we don't ever consider what we think is our passions or what's fun and we look at more what's practical what will give us that steady income mm -hmm. and a lot of times we'll bury those passions yes and yeah I find that if you bury those passions, eventually they're going to creep up on you. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if it's 20 or 30 years down the road, I think, you know, something might just spark it and it all comes tumbling back in. And, and, and I, I, I just thought, why not do this now instead of asking myself 40 years down the road, if, <laughs> oh, should I, should I have done that? And I just didn't do it. And following the fire in your belly, um, of course, it, I'm sure it wasn't necessarily always the easiest route. <laughs> but no. do you have do you have any um, do you have any advice for those who are taking who are needing to take that risk themselves, but are maybe weary or unsure? Yeah, I think how how will you ever know unless you go for it? And I think that I became my own best friend without me expecting it because without me expecting it to happen um, you come up against a lot of obstacles and there's a lot of rejection you know especially in an industry like this there are just so many people who are just needing and wanting to do this to to you know tell stories and and there's there's a very small capacity of of jobs available to people who want to be artists so I think that's sort of, you know, some of my advice is to find out how to be really good to yourself and how to, how do you keep pushing past those no's and past all that rejection? You know, what keeps you motivated and keeps you excited? Like what really makes you need to do it? And I think defining that for yourself as quickly as possible is one of the most important things that, that I did anyway. Well, because when you refine that and you let the nose fuel your motivation, mm -hmm. you really are um, in some ways unstoppable. Those those closed doors don't affect you the same way because mm -hmm. you're not concerned on that, that closed door. You're concerned, your focus is on more of that core motivation that's driving you yes, forward. Yes, absolutely. It should come from why you personally need to do it and, and not from 
that people are recognizing you for what you do or people are saying, yes, sure, we'll have you. You know, you're, we say you're good, therefore you are good. It has to come from why you wanted to do it in the first place and what excites you most about it and what makes you personally feel alive and vivacious and connected to life because of what you're doing. Sarah, I just wanted to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you're an incredible role model and really showing young people that if, what happens when you follow your passion. Thank but you. In general, just embracing yourself and your unique qualities, um, what magic can truly happen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So are you, clearly. <laughs> it's very clear to me that you love what you're doing. So thank you for having me. He said, why aren't you doing this with your life? And I finally asked myself the same question. Why not do this now instead of asking myself 40 years down the road if, <laughs> oh, should I, should I have done that? And I just didn't do it? What makes you personally feel alive and vivacious and connected to life because of what you're doing? How will you ever know unless you go for it? This is the way I will make money and have a stable lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized that there are things that matter so much more than that. What really makes you need to do it? And I think defining that for yourself as quickly as possible is one of the most important things. Yeah.